could you get me a taxi to go to uh, Chaparral Golf okay. Club? I meet at the top of the steps. Schoolboy era. A uh, little excited, first night arrived, had a few too many to drink with an early tea time and I'm, uh, I'm sweating already. Yeah. Good dear. Yeah. I've had enough of the British weather already so I've came out to uh, well Cala Honda on the Costa del Sol and I'm staying at the McDonald Donalola Resort and this is my first round of golf so it's uh, it's hard to believe that just a two and a half hour flight from Manchester into Malaga and uh, well, when the sun comes up I'll be basking in 23 24 degrees whereas last week I was in howling wind and rain right I'm gonna start off with a four iron well it's the right shape at least in the middle of the fairway let's see what lies around the corner That's bullet straight. Oh, wow. It's a part five, by the way, but uh, I've never seen anything that's so tight and so, uh, well, weaves its way. Somewhere up there is a hole. So I've not got a GPS nor a rangefinder, so we're going to be using, which is also part of the story and why I've got a whole new set of clubs this week. Anyway, blues are 50 meters red. Or 100 I'm in between 75 meters is it plus 10% for yardage I think it is right what a start to the morning so my new clubs have produced a birdie first time on camera I should be really good as well. We could be seeing a lot of this, which is a four iron off the tee, which has got me off to a flyer. Oh, I'm swinging it nice this morning. Is that good yardage or long? Oh, a great start to the morning. Roll out ball, roll out, roll out, oh, and that's for two birdies and two holes. What a start that would have been. That's pretty damn good and that is the first drive with, you guessed it, my new driver. Right, so the story in today's video is a big one. As you know and have seen already, I'm doing fairly well with what is a very brand new every single club has been changed for the golf you're going to see in this video and that golf is going to come from three different golf courses because i'm staying in donalola for five nights and i'm playing three different golf courses all of which were uh, they're sort of within 10 minutes of the resort we started off at chaparral and i'm going to play or i'm going to feature three holes from each you've seen two already and we're going to get a cumulative score at the end your job right now is to pause the video and guess what it'll be and you already know i'm one under through two and I've got a decent ball away on the third. So for nine holes, three on each of the courses, what will my score be? And then, maybe more importantly, you've got to find out what are these change of clubs and why has it happened? Oh, terrible. Oh, same again. Same again, haven't it? Right, 17th hole, par five, stroke index two. I'm looking over there because I'm trying to work out which way I'm going. 
I'll work that bit out in a bit. Anyway, what are these golf clubs and why are they so different? And maybe more importantly, the question I'm going to look at, none of these clubs have been custom fit. They're all older clubs. And what I want to find out is uh, two things. How much does that affect my performance? Can you play golf with any golf clubs? So far, it's looked pretty good. And what are the problems, if any, that I face? Right now, it's trying to find out where the fairway is. the right distance just pushed it a tad or oh, it could even be long it's so hard to gauge and one of the downsides is that to these irons that I've got this week is that the sort of feel elements and that was very much a feel shot yardage wise just isn't there the question is what are these irons that I've got in play <sighs> nearly the second chipping of the day so yeah, the distance control was right, but the problem is from these, I call them super game improvement irons, nothing was telling me what was going on in terms of the feel out of the face. And uh, therefore, I'm very much uh, reliant on what it says on the tin. Super game improvement irons performed incredibly well. They are in fact from Callaway and they are X22s. Now you wanna know why are these in the bag? Right, so that was me. Quick look around Chaparral Golf Club. Uh, really enjoyed that nice morning's work. Didn't do too bad on the three holes featured. And to be honest with you, played the back nine really well. And the clubs, no detriment, apart from some small areas. So my X22s, I think it's time we had a bit of a what's in the bag before we kick on to La Cala. <laughs> right, we've arrived at La Cala. There's a little bit of rain, dare I say, but there's blue skies behind. But I'm gonna promise you, or as I promised rather, the what's in the bag before we go any further. You already know about the irons. I'm then gonna go up to my, I'm into a four iron longest iron in the bag. I've then got a tailor-made M1 three hybrid. What is going on, and? Underneath here, I've got a three wood. It's an M1 three wood. You know, I hate three woods. So why have you got one of them? And underneath, the big dog, which I love this driver, by the way, back in the day, it's the TaylorMade M2. And the only other thing you really need to know about is a TaylorMade Monte Carlo 72 putter. After that, no idea. Didn't like the putter yesterday. Loved the driver. Irons, few issues with, but overall, more than happy with the setup. But the big question is, why am I playing this mixed bag? of clubs that just were never fit for me. Well, that's where they said to aim. It was a nice easy swing, a bit tentative, not knowing what lies over the brow. I was the way, but I'm glad to be away. Go ball, go. Stay there now. Huh? That's unbelievable. That hasn't got to kick off the left. A little strike though. Yeah. Happy with it, although this is one of the clubs that, uh, so it's a short end of the bag with those X22 irons, the game improvement irons. They're, they're big, they're clunky. They've got no finesse at about them whatsoever. But I did chip in yesterday, so I can't criticize them too much. But um, yeah, these wouldn't be my choice for that reason alone. Now this thing is an absolute monstrosity. It's still put with it, but I might as well have a breeze block on the end of it because it's, it's just not good. So today I'm playing the Asia course, that's another par, so we're still level par through four, five to go, and we've got one more course coming tomorrow. 
three courses at La Cala. Uh, I've never been here before and uh, to be honest with you again 10 minute taxi drive from Donna Lola. This place looks really really nice indeed. Very well organized, well drilled machine as well. Uh, a lot of people playing golf here. The club that I absolutely love uh, in this setup is from Taylor Main. It's the M2 driver. I love this thing and uh, arguably how much difference is it to the drivers that we've got in our bags today? Well, we should put that to the test one day. But the question is, why have I got these golf clubs in the bag? And as my wife just reminded me when I criticised the putter, that these are in fact somebody else's club. So I better be careful not to offend. And I swear to God, this is about as good as I drove the ball for, uh, well, it's steady. It's so good. It seems plenty quick enough off the face. We talk about dispersion. We talk about 10K MOI. I don't know. That went straight. Oh, short. The tailor made breeze block. Oh my god, I only missed that as well, being clever. Oh, well, we've got to uh, third tee, a par three, which is you'll see very shortly, but what a backdrop that is. It's a nice setup, this, you know. Right, anyway, enough of uh, setups, talking about this setup. Why would you complain? Level par through five holes. Would I game any of these clubs right now? Probably not, so why not? How much clubs do you take off? That's a nice easy swing, left side of the green. Yeah, it's pin eye, just tugged it a little bit down the left. Happy with the distance control. Maybe you should have gone putter after all. I was that fearful of this putter that um, I chose to chip. Only a little bit heavy. I don't know why I doubt this putter because uh, I don't mess with it. Right, that's three straightforward pars at La Cala. Right, so I'm going to continue um, to play the remaining holes at La Cala. And this uh, little cumulative talk we've got going on will carry on tomorrow. It'll come from Santa Clara Golf Club and that's in Marbella. You've seen what Don Loma is all about. And uh, one thing they've asked me to mention is that if you are interested in booking anything, right now there is uh, an offer that they're prepared to give to viewers of the channel, which is for parties of eight or more, they'll give you some free transfers to and from the airport. And the other thing I want to perhaps bring to your attention is there's uh, they run an open competition in February, which is also really good value. So make sure you check that out. Anyway, I'm going to hit this ball and we'll have a little chat about whether or not I think custom fit clubs are still essential. as he finds another fairway with a non-custom fit driver. Right, so before we go any further in our final three holes at Santa Clara, I want to talk about the serious matter, which is, do you need to be custom fit or not? Well, the simple answer to that is no, of course you don't. I've just demonstrated already, six holes in, level par, these clubs, I can make them work. Are they optimal in terms of performance? No. And I suppose that is the key element. What do you want to do with your game? How serious are you about it? The driver being a case in point, not Mr. Fairway. Has it been the longest driver? No. Why has that been? Well, not down to the head, but more down to the shaft. It's, uh, I haven't discussed the shaft, but it's a regular shaft. It's 50 grams, it's lightweight. I've swung it considerably easier than perhaps I like to do. Now, arguably that's a good thing because it's meant to have kept control and I'm a big fan of that. But if you're looking to optimise it, then no, this is far too whippy, far too light for me. Then you go into the irons, same thing. 
not so much the shaft there that head and that offset is doing me no favors whatsoever and now the short end of the game i would have to choose a club that has more feel for me but they did a perfectly suitable and adequate job the putter i do not like sorry sergio who is the manager at donalola who borrowed me these clubs i do not like your putter and uh, no i couldn't choose that all day long but of course if its budgets are restrained uh, you'd rather have any set of clubs than none of course you can play good golf and score good with any golf club but if you're serious and you want to optimize performance then i think what i've learned today for definite is that you need to get custom fit to take this game serious if the pocket and the budget allows you <laughs> Right, the sun is well and truly shining this morning. I'm at Santa Clara Golf Club just outside Marbella. Yes, another 10 minute taxi drive from Donalola. I'm gonna start off, or continue at least, this nine hole challenge. Three more to go here. I'm starting off with a little par three, 150 yards, or at least I think so, because irrelevant of what clubs I've got, I've well and truly missed a GPS or a rangefinder. It's a decent enough strike. Has it got the legs? Yes, it has. We're on the left side of the green. And some of you may notice there's a big swing change going on in the last couple of days. And it's been working so well. Can you spot it? Right, let's see if we can get the pace right. I've not been uh, too good with pace. I've been a little bit slow at times. I think I've done the same again. Yeah, I just cannot get the pace on long putts here at all. Ah, well, I mean, it was a long way from the old, but uh, that is a terrible first effort with the, the tailor-made breeze block, as I like to call it. I think they should, or uh, well, somebody should name a putter after my new little uh, christening, the breeze block. Right, come on, prove the doubt is wrong. Let's show them how this putter works. <sighs> the tailor-made breeze block. It never lets me down. Right, next up is the 16th, and I've come to what they call the Pro T, and I'm far from it, but uh, I wanted to have a look. It's a very different hole from the Yellows. It's about another, I mean, it must be almost 100 yards shorter. And I'm not sure whether I've got this carry in me, but I'm, uh, I'm also wanting the challenge. Can the M2 driver? It looks a long way, but. Well, here we go. We've gone certainly on the safer side. I think that's way over. Yeah, that's way over. I'm not sure about exactly where it came down, towards the trees on the right hand side, but uh, yeah, that wasn't as bad as it looked. But how good is that for a tee shot or a, a tee location? Stunning. That was a solid drive in the end and uh, the M2 certainly hasn't let me down in the uh, driver's stakes. Still performing as a great club. Um, again, a little bit of guesswork going on here because uh, I'm going with 8 iron. There's not a lot of room to miss here. It's a solid strike, but I don't know if it's got enough legs. Go. Oh, no, it has come up short, but I think it's not a bad bailout, that. It was right at the flag. Well, this could have been a lot worse, like I said, and uh, another good iron at the flag. It's got to turn a bit. Oh, it's good pace as well. I've preferred chipping than, uh, than I have putting from that kind of distance, to be honest with you, because the ball pulls up fairly sharpish. Um, but unfortunately, I just push this one out. Right, this is to maintain level par with one to go. Have faith in the putter. Nobody ever doubted that this putter would save me yet again after all the criticism I've given it. Right, final hole of the challenge. Really want to finish off with that par or maybe even better. Weird golf hole. 
green directly over that way, fairway that way. So we've got a severe dog leg right to left. And uh, I am really firing this one a little bit into the unknown. Come on, let's have a positive finish. It wasn't the best of swings, but I reckon that will be, from what I'm reading, that should be a decent position. I don't think we could have picked three worse holes to film. Every one of them has been into the sun. I just want to talk about this M2 drive, you know, because I think on camera, I've pretty much hit every fairway with it, center stripe. And off camera as well, I can assure you, it's been pretty similar. You probably struggled to pick it up, but we're on the horizon there. We're, we're in good nick, but we could have gone a lot longer down there with, uh, with driver. I didn't realize I had that much to play with room wise. And this is a little bit of a, again, reliant on eyes rather than uh, for distance, rather than science. I'm going with a pitching wedge, see if we can get it close. It's at it, it's at it. Oh, I've done what I've done all day, which has just come up a yard short. Ah, oh, I was right at the flag again. Really annoyed at that one because, uh, well, it's pitched right by here. A yard more and I've got a birdie chance. Now I've got a horrible little up and down. What's been really interesting, and I'm not even going to bother with that one, that's, uh, that is gimme range. What's been interesting with this, I don't know, experiment is that I would say that that club there, I had no feel. Um, it's very cumbersome. I've literally, it's, it's just done everything I would expect it not to do in there. I've, I think I've got up and down pretty much every time with it. So there you go. I think um, we've got a few things that we need to uh, finish on. One. Donalola, an excellent place, base for a uh, some golf in the sun. I've played three great golf courses, you've had a little look around them, and then we've had this little experiment about these clubs that I ended up borrowing from Sergio. You've done me proud, I ended up level par with a set of clubs that weren't custom fit. So clearly, yes, you can play golf with absolutely anything you fancy. Can I have that? I'll tell you what. It's got to be the old breeze block one-handed. What a putter.